This is Professor V. V. S. H. Prasad, Department of Mechanical Engineering, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. And the subject dealt is Dynamics of Machinery. In that, the topic is Continuation of the Static Force Analysis. And this, after successful completion of the course, students should be able to. And the subject has got six course object outcomes in that one. The CO3 that is the illustrate the static and dynamic force analysis of two and three force members by graphical comma and superposition method that is being adopted in this and this particular topic will meet the course outcome three. Then we will try to introduce the superposition method. What is superposition method means when a number of forces that is the loads act upon a system linear, the net effect is equal to the superposition of the effects of the individual forces taken at a time. Linear system output force is directly proportional to the input force. And that is what we call it as the linear or that is we put it as the superposition method. The concept that we have to un understand is when you look at it the a problem which we have shown below is giving there are two loads that is the load FB and load FE. Two loads are acting up upon the slider crank mechanism and we have to find out the net effect to get the required torque to oppose the uh, to see that the stability is kept intact for that one we will ignore the force fe at the point e initially and then we will apply the force fb and we will see the what is the required torque on link o2 a that is t2 we are going to determine then we will ignore the FB and we will see what is the effect of the FE that is 6000 Newtons when it is applied on the link that is the connecting rod AB link 3 which is oriented at 35 degrees to the link AB. So the resulting output T2 is a vector in both the cases. The vectorial addition of the effect of these two because of the FB2000 and FB FE6000 will become uh, will be added vectorially and the resultant torque is the net effect on the given system in any mechanical system. And the when you see here the problem is solved in two sub problems considering only FB and considering only FE. So considering only FB and getting the result and considering only Fe and getting the results. So, when you refer to the superposition method, when the statement the individual forces taken at a time, that is what it is, individual forces taken at a time, that is, and the linear system is output force is directly proportional to the input force. This is what we call it as the superposition method. And we have the a slider crank mechanism with the geometry that is O2A, that is the crank is of 100 mm and A2B, that is the connecting rod is 250 mm and AE, a position on the connecting rod located at 50 mm and the orientation is AO2B is an angle that angle is 30 degrees to the line of stroke. With this, we are going to make the configuration diagram. This we call it as the configuration diagram. With the configuration diagram, to draw this configuration diagram, take the line and from O, mark A, at an angle 30 degrees from A 
onto the line of stroke, mark the point B and join O2 AB and that forms the give a required configuration of the slider crank mechanism. And our objective is to determine T2 torque on the link 2 to keep the slider crank mechanism in equilibrium condition. So, as we discuss, the problem is solved as two sub problems considering FB and considering FE. So, considering only FB and neglecting FE, this is please make a note of it. 1 cm is equal to 500 newtons. 1 cm is equal to 500 newtons. Then, here our objective is to identify members with three fours. When you see the link four, this is a member with three forces. And when you consider link three, it is a member with two forces. And when you consider the link O to A, this is a link with two forces and torque as we have seen in the previous class. So, first is FB magnitude and direction is known to us. Then F14 that is external force which is being applied as 2000 newtons, 2000 newtons. Then line of action of F-14 is known to us and the direction of F-34 means the force of link 3 on link 4 and here the force of link 1 on link 4. When you see the link is considered as, link 4 is considered as with 3 forces. Then draw a line of 500, 1 cm is equal to 500 newtons, then FB length as 4 centimeters and magnitude is known to us. Then draw a line from this end where the direction of F14 dash is known and it is parallel to the given configuration. And join dry line parallel to LOA of F-34 and this forms a complete polygon of polygon of forces of triangle, polygon of forces of, of forces of triangle. Okay, with this what happened? We can know the magnitude and the direction of F-34 from the given scale when this is equal to 2000 of FB which is known, F-14 is 450 newtons, F-34 is 2100 newtons because if you apply the uh, Pythagoras theorem also, these 2000 square plus 450 square under root should give you the 2100 as the force. Now, this is the free body diagram of link 4, free body diagram of link 3, free body diagram of the link 2. When it comes to link 3, F dash 4 3 is equal to F dash 3 4 is equal to F dash 2 3. When you see these forces, when you see F dash 3 4 is opposite to F dash F4 3 dash. Then this is the direction is opposite to F dash 3 4 F 3 dash 4 is equal to F 4 3 dash in the opposite direction minus okay opposite direction to F dash 3 4. Then try to understand this. After this, 
f dash 3 2 opposite is f dash 1 2 and here our objective is to determine the distance between f dash 3 2 to f dash 1 2 and link o to a we consider as two forces and a torque or a couple that is what we have to understand here therefore f dash 3 2 into h h dash is considered as the torque that is being applied in the counterclockwise direction because f dash 3 2 is opposite to f 2 3 dash f 2 3 dash to the opposite therefore f 1 2 dash is t 2 dash this is because of the one force considering only f b and neglecting the f e now the second approach is considering only f e and neglecting f b okay from this what we understand is here link 3 a b and f e orientation when you see here f1 double dash 4 that is f double dash 3 4 these two are opposite to this opposite to this they will be acting because this is parallel to this then again 1 centimeter is equal to 2000 newtons when you take the point what we wanted to here the link a b is drawn and draw a line f e and draw a line parallel to f double dash 3 4 graphical method and both will be intersecting at this point and this we call it as the point of concurrence then this point this point and point a is known join a to this point point of concurrence then that will become the line of action for the f double dash 2 3 f double dash 2 3 to get the value of f double dash 2 3 here from here we have got the direction you have got to get the magnitude we should construct the force triangle force polygon triangle for which the scale is 1 centimeter is equal to 2000 newtons that fe is drawn to the given scale and draw a line parallel to loa of f double dash 43 and draw a line parallel to loa of f, f double dash 23 and join these three then we are going to get the magnitude of the f double dash 2 3 that is the force that is acting on the link 3 and and the opposite force is link 2 on link 3 therefore we have got the values of f double dash 3 2 f double dash 1 2 that is that becomes t 2 that becomes t2 then this will become f double dash 3 2 into h double dash that is the distance between these two is going to be your h double dash that is 5800 into 20 this will become 1 lakh 16000 newton mm the total effect torque that is required to oppose the forces because of fb and fe is equal to sum of the because of the t2 dash and t2 double dash which will be equal to 2 lakhs 63000 newton mm and this will be acting in the counterclockwise direction to see that the physical observation is also very much clear that unless when you apply this force and this force Definitely, the torque should be applied in the
counterclockwise direction to keep the mechanism in equilibrium condition. And the method what we have adopted to solve this particular problem when the link 3 and the link 4 are having some external known forces. And the simple concept is link 3 is a member with 3 forces and link 4 is a member with 3 forces. Resolving individually taken at one time, then the procedure that what we have applied is applying the method of superposition. Then we will go for the Normally, we consider the dynamic for uh, static force analysis we have considered so far, consider, not considering the friction. Now, force analysis considering the friction force. If friction is considered in the analysis, the resultant force on a pin does not pass through the center of the pin. In the earlier class, which we have discussed is, the force will pass through the center of a pin. When the friction between any two links is considered, it will not pass through the center of the pin. Therefore, the coefficient of friction mu is assumed to be known and it is independent of the load and speed. Then what is the coefficient of friction? Here if you see, the load is applied P and normal reaction is N, where N is equal to P. Okay? And when you consider the frictional force between the uh, two members is F is equal to mu into N, where the inclined direction is going to be at an angle phi. Tan phi is considered as N is equal to mu into N, where F is equal to frictional force, coefficient of friction, where tan phi is equal to mu, mu N by N. Okay? So, this is the friction in sliding members, then friction in rotating members. This is the restoring moment will be acting and impending motion will be there in the right hand direction. When a shaft revolves in a bearing, some power is lost due to friction between the surfaces. That is a known concept and if you consider a journal and a bearing, W happens to the weight of the shaft and R is the radius of the shaft, the point of contact is A and R is reaction that is taking place, bearing and general. Normal reaction R, Rn is normal reaction, frictional force is equal to mu into Rn, mu is equal to tan phi. Therefore, here R is equal to W at rest. Then, when it is trying to rotate, when it is trying to rotate, therefore, in the clockwise, the reaction force is going to be in the counterclockwise. F is equal to mu into Rn, where R is equal to shaft radius. Then, if you, the R is going to be shifted here, and if you project it here, then this is the normal reaction. And if you join these two, R is the resultant moment because of these two components of the force. And when you take this phi as the friction, therefore, while rotating the point of contact of shaft B is R and passes through B. The resultant R is in a direction opposite to omega. The circle drawn at O with OC as radius is called friction circle. For the shaft to be in equilibrium, weight of the shaft should be equal to R. Frictional moment is equal to R into OC. R is equal to W. W into OC. Where OC is calculated as W is into R sin phi. R sin phi, where theta is very small, sin theta is approximated to uh, tan phi. Therefore, for small angles, that is the frictional moment is equal to weight of the shaft into frictional uh, R, R of the shaft, that is radius of the shaft and frictional coefficient of mu. Therefore, R into mu is called the radius of the friction circle. When you see here, this is called friction circle.
is called friction circle. Okay. Therefore, the friction circle is used to locate the line of action of the force between shaft and the bearing or a pin joint. The direction of the force is always to the tangent to the frictional axis. Frictional axis is new axis along which the thrust acts. Here, the point to be observed is the, the W is in the same direction, but the reaction is shifted. Normal reaction is, but the uh, resultant reaction R is shifted and it is tangential to the friction circuit. Therefore, what is happening in the frictional force analysis or static force using the friction is the line of action is going to change. Therefore, the magnitude of the friction forces that will be experienced by the members for obtaining the state of equilibrium is getting modified when we consider the friction at sliding points or at the pin points in a bearing using the friction circuit. With this, we will further try to understand in a four bar mechanism A, B, C, D, where A, B is 350 millimeters and BC is 50 millimeters, CD is 400 millimeters and AD is 700 millimeters and DE, when you see the link, DE, my observation where I have put this, is 150 millimeters and DAB, DAB, angle, angle, DAB is 60 degrees and AD is fixed. Determine the force on link AB required at the midpoint in the direction shown for static equilibrium. Consider coefficient of friction as point 0 0.4 for revolving pace. Assume counterclockwise impending motion of the link AB. Radius of each journal is 50 millimeters and also find the torque on the AB for its impending clockwise motion also because if there are two forces acting F is equal to 45 Newtons at E and F2 unknown what is the torque that is required to keep the system in equilibrium condition. Okay. First, we are going to, because here analysis we are going to consider in the clock counterclockwise motion. Analysis for ground counterclockwise motion. When we consider here solving the problem, neglecting the friction to know the magnitudes and directions of the forces. This is, please make a note of it. Then, we are going to do the free body diagram diagrams first for the diagrams for the all the links. So, here what we understand is here the F4 is known, F4 is known and F34, F34 direction is obtained and F14 is required. Okay. So, from the given scales, 1 cm is equal to 10 newtons, we have obtained F34 is equal to 18 newtons, F43 and F23. Then F32 is 18 newtons opposite to that. And we know this, we know the direction of F2, which is at an angle. 30 degrees, which is unknown. And the force direction of LOA of F32 is known to you. Link 3 acting on 2 is extended and this force is intersecting at this point. Then join LOA of F12 and this will become the line of action. And the solution has to be obtained to get the F2 is like this. 
F2 is 25 newtons, F3 2 is 18 newtons, which is already known to you as F17 because this is known to us and one line drawn as per the L LOA line of action of F2 and F12 because of the concurrence, the direction is known to us. And if you close this circle, the directions of the F12 and F2 are known to us. Similarly, here also we have got because F34 is known and accordingly F43 has been determined. So, for that, the now we consider radius of the friction circle is equal to mu into journal radius. That is 0.4 is the coefficient of friction into radius of the pin C is 50. Therefore, friction circle is 20. Then analysis with friction considered AB rotates clockwise and DC rotates counterclockwise. AB rotates counterclockwise. DC also rotates counterclockwise. Angle ABC decreasing. Therefore, angle BCD increasing. Okay. At C, angle BCD increases and 3 rotates in clockwise with respect to 2. Therefore, F23 forms a counterclockwise friction couple at B to understand this. This is the orientation we are going to get here. Okay. At D, if we consider here, what we have drawn is these are the friction circles. Okay. At D, link 4 rotates counterclockwise. Therefore, should form a counterclockwise, clockwise couple at D. Clockwise couple at D. Therefore, F is projected and to the friction, it is going to be tangential locate here. Then at C also joins tangential to this. Based on this, F3, 4, F4, 3, F2, 3. This is, these are all the friction circles. Therefore, F2, 3, F3, 2 when it comes to the link 2. Therefore, F2 projected O and dash and this is F2 is unknown and we wanted to find out the intersection point because of the F23. Then the F12 is also identified because of the it will be at tangent shelling at 2 rotates in counterclockwise and therefore at A F12 form a clockwise couple. Will, will form a clockwise couple. Therefore, this point and this point has to be joined with this. The magnitude of the magnitude of F34 without friction, when we have considered it is it is uh, changed actually. It is changed. That is F4 is 28, F34 is changed. Therefore, with this F23, we have got 20.3 Newtons. Earlier, we have got 25 Newtons. So, now it is reduced. F2 is reduced. Therefore, this is how the orientation is changed. The torque that is required is, as we know, parallel distance between these two, the torque required for clockwise rotation of the a, B. So, where we have shown these are the static force analysis for the members with counterclockwise and clockwise motion. Now, we will start a dynamic force analysis on an engine. Dynamic force analysis on an engine. When we come to the dynamic force analysis, for an slider crank mechanism, piston and cylinder forms an important part where the piston mass is considered and initially 
we have to Indian force analysis has to be done in four steps. Determine the displacement, velocity and acceleration in the piston or for the piston. Apply the equilibrium conditions to determine the forces on the piston, thrust engine side walls and connecting rod. Determine the forces on the crank pin resolved, thrust on the bearings and turning moment. Apply the principles of static force and dynamic force in planar mechanisms to do the engine force analysis. These are the four steps. Under that, the first one which we are going to do is determination of the displacement, velocity and acceleration of the piston. Then dynamic analysis of slider crank mechanism and we are going to make an analytical approach. Here what we write is the B is at at the IDC, that is what we call it as the inner dead center. Okay. B1 is the displacement of the piston taken and the displacement is taken as, if you consider here, this is the IDC, inner dead center. From here, it is shifted by and moved by an amount of X displacement from IDC when Crank has made an angle theta with respect to horizontal line of stroke. Here we call it as the IDC and ODC. IDC means inner dead center, ODC means outer dead center. Then here, when you consider X is equal to displacement from the IDC, therefore X is equal to B, B1. B, B1. This is the displacement distance. Okay. This we can consider this BO minus B1O, that is the distance. So, I wanted to have from here to here minus from here to here is equal to X. Then BO minus B1A1 plus A1O. Then we consider this, let L is equal to length of the connecting rod and R is equal to crank radius. Therefore, BO can be written as L plus R and where B1A1 means B1A1 when crank makes an angle phi with the line. This horizontal distance is L cos phi and this A1O is R cos theta. Therefore, here we wanted to introduce a new term L by R is equal to N, where L is equal to length of connecting rod divided by radius of the crank. Therefore, L by R is notated as N. Therefore, what I wanted to say is, therefore, L is equal to R into N. N is ratio of length of connecting rod to the radius of connecting rod. N plus NR plus R minus Rn cos phi plus R cos theta. Therefore, if you make an observation, R is common throughout. R into N plus 1 minus N cos phi plus cos theta. And cos phi can be written as, here if you look here, cos phi can be written as under root 1 minus sin square phi. Therefore, sin square phi can be written as y square minus l square. y square is equivalent for both the cases 1 minus r sin theta whole square by l square. Then 
if you put sin square by n square, if you bring down r square down sin square theta by n square, 1 minus sin square theta by n square. Therefore, if you take n as LCM, 1 by n into under root n square minus sin square theta. This I wanted to write here. Therefore, here I can write this as r into n plus 1 minus under root n square minus sin square theta plus cos theta. Then, if you open up the brackets 1 minus cos theta plus n into under root n square minus n square theta. This is what we call it as the displacement. Here what we have to understand is the displacement is exclusively dependent on theta. The reason is where r is equal to constant and n is equal to constant. But it is dependent only on inclination of the crank with respect to the line of action or the axis line. Therefore, we say that the x is dependent purely on the theta that is the displacement of the crank because radius and L by R is constant. Similarly, if L is much greater than R, then L by R is equal to N is much greater than 1. Maximum value of sin theta is equal to 1. Therefore, N square minus 1 becomes under root N square. If you neglect the sin theta is equal to 1, if you consider Therefore, which is equal to under root n square. Therefore, x is equal to x is equal to n square minus n square theta. If you write as n, therefore n minus n, this gets cancelled. Therefore, x is equal to r into 1 minus cos theta. Therefore, when the displacement is proportional to theta, the motion of the piston is considered as and we consider this as the it is executing a simple harmonic motion it is executing a simple harmonic motion further so once we get the simple harmonic motion definitely we have to determine dx by dt as the velocity then dv by dt as acceleration. This is the velocity of the piston and the acceleration of the piston. These two terms we need to determine because when you wanted to find out the inertia force of the piston, then F is equal to Ma, where M is equal to mass of the piston, where A is equal to acceleration of the piston. That will be affecting your turning moment, the objective of this vel displacement, velocity and acceleration. Ultimately, we have to consider the inertia effect of the piston on the engine for determining the turning moment. That is the objective behind this whole exercise. The velocity of the piston we can write as V is equal to dx by dt that is equal to dx by d theta into d theta by dt, where this is a chain rule, this is a chain rule. Therefore, dx by d theta into d theta by dt, if you write and differentiating x, already x we know r into 1 minus cos theta plus n plus n minus n square minus sin theta whole to the power of half and d theta by dt. When you write this, definitely this becomes the differential of this term. d theta by dt is going to be your omega, that is the angular velocity of the crank and r is the radius of the crank. Then we will become sin theta plus sin 2 theta by 2 into under root n square minus sin square theta. This is going to be your velocity of the piston. Okay.
here also we will do certain amount of uh, approximation so that the formula becomes simple for anybody to adopt. If n square is much much greater than sin square theta. So if you see sin theta value, say sin 30 degrees is equal to sin theta is equal to 0 0.5 when sin square means 0 0.025. So definitely if n is definitely always greater than or equal greater than 1, therefore if n happens to be 4 or 5, therefore 25 is much higher than 0 0.025. Hence, if you neglect the sin square theta, then our velocity term becomes v is equal to this term. And if you neglect sin square theta, then sin 2 theta by 2n can be neglected because sin 2 theta becomes much smaller when it is divided by 2n. Therefore, r is v is equal to r omega sin theta. Okay. So, further, if we have to get the acceleration, the acceleration has to be acceleration of the piston is equal to dv by dt, dv by d theta into d theta by dt. This is again a chain rule. Then again, d by d theta into r into sin theta plus sin 2 theta by 2n into omega where omega will come over here r omega into cos theta plus 2 cos theta by 2n where already omega is there here omega square it will become r omega square it will become r omega square cos theta plus 2 cos 2 theta by 2n where 2 and 2 gets cancelled Therefore, r omega square into cos theta plus cos 2 theta by n. If n is very large, therefore, acceleration of the piston as given as r omega square cos theta. And as we have seen, this is a simple harmonic motion. And this is a simple harmonic motion. At this point of time, we will stop here. At IDC, theta is equal to 0. Therefore, A is equal to r omega square into 1 plus 1 by n. Then when theta is equal to 180 at ODC, this becomes r omega square minus plus 1 by n. When theta is equal to n, when the direction is reversed. So, this is at IDC and this is at ODC. So, this is how the velocity, displacement, velocity and acceleration of a piston are determined further to this. We are going to determine the angular velocity and angular acceleration of the CR. CR means connecting rod. So, from the given graph where we see here, we see here, this is L sin alpha, this is also equal to sin phi, also equal to R sin theta because from the given diagram, from the given diagram, when you see here, this y is equal to L sin phi, this y is also equal to R cos theta, R sin theta from here. So, y is equal to L sin phi is equal to R sin theta. Therefore, sin phi is equal to sin theta by n because if you bring down the R here, L by R is equal to n. Differentiating with respect to time on both the sides, d phi cos phi into d phi by dt is equal to 1 by n into cos theta into d theta by dt. Therefore, d theta by dt is equal to omega where cos phi I wanted to bring down here d phi by d theta is called angular velocity of the connecting rod omega into cos theta by n into 1 by n into under root n square minus sin square theta where cos phi 
we have got it as 1 by n into under root sin square n square minus sin square theta earlier. This term has been derived by us. Then omega into cos theta by under root n square minus sin square theta n and get cancelled. Alpha c is d omega c by dt d omega c by d theta into d theta by dt. Therefore, omega into d theta by dt is again omega, therefore omega square. Then differential is cos theta into n square minus sin square whole to the power of minus half. Therefore, omega square into this is to be differentiated as uv. First function into differential of second function and second function into differential of the first function by differentiation. Then we have got the term omega square sin square theta into this term we have got it. That is minus omega square sin theta n square minus 1 by n square minus sin square theta whole to the power of 3 by 2. Negative sign indicates that phi reduces in the case angular acceleration of connecting rod is clockwise. And these are the textbooks which we have followed. It is advised to follow the SS Ratan theory of machines and J.S. Rao and R.V. Dukhi party and many any textbook can be referred. And thank you for like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.